all right you guys welcome back uh you may see a few things that are different since the last video i kind of just copy and pasted some of these trees over here because my ocd got the best of me i know i'm sorry i let it happen i i said i wasn't gonna put trees in here but at least i just literally like took a chunk and dropped them in so i didn't put any effort into these Anyways, so uh, a few things happened. Our sable antelopes grew up. I think a few more of these are pregnant. So yeah, they're coming on the second generation here. We had to get rid of the two antelope boys because they have one alpha and it's this guy right here. And he's got pretty good genetics. So unless we breed something better than him, he's going to remain the alpha as long as he can breed. We do have a new little baby water buffalo. Uh, his name is Asim and he is actually a gold medal. Uh, water buffalo so he's probably gonna end up taking the place of his father uh because he has way better genetics here we'll get him some ladies to breed with whoa <laughs> that was kind of crazy he just ran through those and i think we have another buffalo on the way i added a few more enrichment actually no pemba has not successfully made it yet which is unfortunate hopefully she'll get it in there <laughs> eventually if you know what i mean all right so Today, uh, we've been earning some money. We're actually on a really good track here. We're making about 12K profit. I want to go ahead and start our terraforming today. And if we get far enough, potentially relocating these guys to their new habitat. We have to be careful though, that we don't move too much stuff around because our zoo is functioning right now and we don't want to mess it up just because of aesthetics. So we have to be a little bit careful we don't move too fast. Because of that, instead of working on a new habitat for these guys, we might place an entirely new animal in this area first. And then then once this area is secure, we move these ones over. So uh, I want this to kind of be a, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like a sloping ravine down into the middle here. So I'm going to get a slope going. I want it to go downwards. And I know this looks kind of crazy right now. Uh, there's a cave and everything, but I kind of just need to get the slope in there. Hopefully this chisel tool will help us get the look we're going for. Um... I don't necessarily know where the bottom's gonna be, so let's go ahead and flatten this out. Let's say this is the bottom here. So we've got this like canyon look we're gonna be going for, as if a river may have carved this out. So this is already pretty deep. I think this is a good level to leave us at because we're gonna be going down, but we're also gonna be going up uh, on cliffs and stuff later on as well. So we don't wanna we don't wanna go down too far. We gotta have to view the natural ground this right here as the middle ground so we can go down from it and we can go up from it we don't want to just go in one direction all right so terraforming this is kind of where i want our first habitat to go potentially so we're gonna go ahead and leave this here so continuing to farm this out uh i'm going to now probably just go along here and drag this out a little bit onto where we would want it to go next so i might get a little quiet here because i'm thinking <laughs> And I tend to get quiet when I'm thinking, but I'll try to keep talking. Kind of give you guys the idea that I'm going for. Um, we want this to be, like, freaking massive. So you can kind of already see this is a huge, huge, huge ravine in comparison to a guest. This alone is already the size of our entire park. So that's kind of good. That's what we want. Uh, I'm going to keep doing the chisel tool here. And I guess the most important thing that we haven't checked yet that we probably should is, is this too steep for a path to go on? So really quickly, I'm going to see if I can even build a path, and it looks like I can. So this is good. We need to make sure that we can. It looks like it might be rough in a few areas though, so I'm gonna go through and ultimately smooth it. I also do not like how large this entrance is here. It doesn't need to be that big. We're, we're making the entrance to a canyon. We don't need every everything to be so flattened out right here. I do think it'd be cool to kind of have it be a split entrance, like maybe over here, but then also around this way, there's a way down into the canyon. So I'll probably leave some room for that here in a second. I did make this kind of close to my staff facilities, which is unfortunate. Uh, we'll have to work through that. I'm actually gonna see if maybe I can make this even flatter here. I don't feel like that was the right move. I'm still trying to learn what the chisel tool does, but I think it moves in one direction. It's nice, but I didn't want that. I think we have to use the dreaded flatten the surface tool. I really hate this tool. It's 
it's garbage. Let's let's be honest. It's not. We don't need to be nice about it. This tool is garbage. I hate how it works. It's really hard to use because you can only get one angle on it. Okay. This is gonna be our path down. Right there. And then everything else we can kind of mess around with. I need to make the brush smaller here just because of that. I don't want to accidentally mess that up. Um, let's smoothen this down really quick. And finally, let's make sure we can actually get a path going successfully down here. Uh, we would not want to think we're done terraforming only to find out that we're actually not. So always test your builds. Always, always, always. That's like rule number one. Okay, right here I can already see that we're having some issues with steepness. Um, I'm gonna see what happens if we go to the left or to the right. We can successfully make a squiggly path. I don't know if that's the vibe I want to go for though. Like you can kind of see like it's a little bit rough. Um, yeah, uh, so we could have a path going all the way down, but do I want it to zigzag like this? Not really. I, I think it'd be nicer to have it, I don't know. I don't like how limited I am, so we're gonna try to flatten this out even just a little bit more. It's just too steep still. It doesn't look very steep, but it's always steeper than you actually think it is. Alright, let's hope that this new kind of flattening chunk here will help us out. Make sure you go all the way to the bottom, because once you lift up your mouse using this flattened terrain tool, you will never get that exact spot left back. Even if you put it back exactly where you lift it off, so like right here, you can already see like it's kind of varying a little bit. You can see it moving the terrain. Like, why? That's why I hate the tool so much. It'd be so much nicer if it wasn't like that, because it's like never the same level. Like, if I put it here, it's already changing. Like, why? <laughs> so I tend not to use it unless I'm using it for this specific purpose. Okay, let's see if we can get this to flatten out enough for us to put a path down. It's gonna be a little difficult. Let's smoothen it. Let's say we're taking our path from here and we're going down. Just testing it. I'll actually play the game in the background while we're doing this. Okay, still having some steepness issues. Do we care a little bit? Yeah, we're having that issue again where it says it's too steep when really, is it? Is it though? <laughs> Ugh, I feel like we flattened this so much. I'm just not happy with how limited our path placement is here. Like, I don't mind a curvy path, but I don't like these the way the path looks. The, the angles are too sharp here. Gosh, this is going to be hard. I think I'm going to fast forward. You guys see what I'm trying to do here. I think I'm going to fast forward so you guys don't have to watch through this tedious process. I'm going to I'm gonna make the path work. You guys just wait. You'll come back and you'll be like, wow, this was worth waiting for. So it will probably be one second for you guys. But for me, it might be two hours. Am I okay with that? Yes. <laughs> All right, we are back. I kind of went a little bit further than I thought I was going to. I started getting carried away with ideas for the path. I had to remind myself to unpause and start recording again. So <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not too much. I, I stopped myself. So I have the idea of having maybe like a food court slash overlook kind of right here. Um, so that's kind of what this branch off is for. And I'm going to do some more sculpting now. I might speed up this part of the video um, just because it's going to be a lot of terraforming and I don't want you guys to have to sit through that in slow motion. So let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, so this is kind of the layout I am thinking of having for our food court. So we'll have the little shops and stalls in here. We'll have some nice area for picnic seating over here as well. And then I kind of left this outer rim here because I want the guests to be able to decide if they want to come over here and get a view of the first animal we're going to be putting into this ravine. I don't know, what would you guys call this? Chasm? Canyon? Something like that. I think we'll go with canyon. So I'm planning on setting up our first exhibit kind of right here. So we'll have a view from the food court into the exhibit along with a path that will be going around this way. I'm probably going to try to maintain natural barriers as much as possible. So the way I'm going to set up this habitat is probably going to be with some kind of ditch around the edge. So we'll have um, a ditch that the animals cannot cross in hopes of keeping the guests away and the animals safe. So that is probably going to be our first enclosure. I just have to decide what to put into the habitat itself, but I think we're going to save that for next episode because we did a lot of terraforming today and uh, this is very rough. I'll kind of go through what I want to do. So I'll have the canyon going this way um, and then this way as well. This will be the main part of the, the canyon, but we're gonna have a lot of off shoots and some branches so i'll have a branch going this way and we'll have a branch going this way as well and uh this will leave us with like central islands or mesas but not really mesas because they're not technically extruded i'll have to actually look up the word cliff sides <laughs> My geography is failing me right now, so uh, we'll have a lot of places around the edge. Um, just picture having like these cool bridges going across smaller gaps like here. Maybe we'll have a bridge over here as well. So we'll also have habitats and animals that are above the ridge. And then um, on top of that, we're going to be doing some raised mesas and plateaus as well. So we're going to have a lot of heights here, hence the name Oasis Heights. I'm very, very excited to start planning on what kind of animals because we could have this kind of dried out savanna feel here in the front and then maybe towards the back we'll move into a lush rainforest maybe there's a water source that's kind of carved out this canyon it's dried out over here and you have to go deeper into the zoo to find the rainforest something like that so we'll go through and we'll we'll kind of keep it themed but not like african you know like Asian. We're not going to go with those kind of themes. It's more just going to be what vibes together. We'll see what feels right. So I'm going to be probably picking out an animal for next stream to be making an exhibit for here because once again, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could just put in like the sable antelopes or the buffalo alone and then separate them for now and then move them in together eventually. Maybe that would be the call because uh, we don't want to expand our zoo too quickly. We don't want to get too many species too quickly. We are doing pretty well profit wise, but I would like to see this number go up a little bit more before we expand into larger animals like elephants and giraffes because, oh my gosh, elephants will eat you away. They, <laughs> I had like three elephants in this one zoo and it was costing me $12,000 a year to feed just the three elephants. So imagine what's going to happen when we get an entire herd. Anyways, I'm really excited to see how this comes together. So I hope you guys are excited for next episode where we're going to be putting in the Let's, let's say, let's move the buffalo over here. We'll be creating in the area for the buffalo and then also making sure we're keeping in mind that sable antelope will be joining them shortly afterwards. So they might get this large chunk of land right here. We'll make sure they have plenty of water, lots of fun stuff. And then if we have time, depending on how long that takes, we'll also be moving the food court over here as well. So I'm really, really excited to see where this goes. And thank you guys again for watching. I will see you next time.